Welcome to worship today, everyone. I'm really glad that you have chosen to be here to join us and to uh, worship with us this morning. Feel free to say hello in the comment section and let other worshipers know you're there. I'll be there right with you so we can speak to each other in that section as we go along. Know that God is present with you and God is present wherever you are as you come to worship. We are once again faced with the very difficult decision of suspending our in-person worship for the foreseeable future. It was not an easy decision, but the COVID numbers in our city, in our nation, are skyrocketing. And we made this decision based on love for you, our church family, to keep you safe and for your protection. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. And one of the things that we're going to think about and talk about today is being thankful, even in the midst of it. I'll tell you one thing I am thankful for today, and that's technology. Yes, I said it. I'm thankful for technology. I'm thankful that we can be together here in this place. I know that it's not the same. But as someone said this week, at least it's something and at least it's available. Tonight, I invite you to again, again to worship, to come on our Zoom call. We'll have a Zoom Thanksgiving service tonight. We'll have an opportunity to, to see each other as we worship and talk about our blessings. We'll start that at seven o'clock tonight uh, on Zoom. If you'd like an invitation and haven't received one yet, just put it in the comments or private message me and I'll see that you get one. So now we come before God in worship. In all times and in all places, God is our beginning and our ending. God in whose perfect image we were created. We come now to worship and praise God's holy name. Please join me in our call to worship. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God. God made us. We didn't make God. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal, always and ever. Let us worship God with joy. Let us pray together. Our gracious God, we thank you that we can gather today to worship you. That though you call us personally to the life of faith, you never call us to walk alone. We bless you for the church, for the family of faith in all its rich diversity of age and gender, ethnicity and experience. For all that it has meant to us in the past and still means to us now. 
We give you thanks for every time we have come here cast down and discouraged, and you came to us and put a fresh heart into us. For every time we came here struggling with temptation and found here the strength to choose the right road. For every time we came here with a sore heart and found your comfort. For every time we met with you and you spoke to us in this place. Lord, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose and for the gifts of your word, your power and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. Help us, O God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given to us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us, Help us be filled with faith and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in the world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. Forgive us when we are demanding of others and not supportive. Forgive us when we make life harder for others rather than easier, when we grumble rather than encourage, when we are selfish rather than thoughtful. We confess our sins and ask your forgiveness. We gather this morning believing that as we gather in Christ's name, you are present with us by your spirit, ready to meet us, to pardon our failures, and to strengthen our resolve to guide us in the coming week. We ask that you hear this prayer and the prayer that you taught us to pray as we pray it together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the 100th chapter of the book of Psalms. Shout with joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless God's name. 
for the Lord is good, his unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So here we are in the fourth of four Sundays in the study of the book of Psalm. Thanksgiving Sunday, Psalm 100. Also here we are, back online again. I remember when Lent and Easter were here and we were online for those holidays and we were thinking, I was thinking, what a grand celebration Christmas is going to be when we can be back together for these year-end holidays. Here we are at these year-end holidays, still online, still fairly isolated from one another. So let's talk about Thanksgiving. For the most part, we're grateful people. Some are more grateful than others. We all know people who can't find one single thing to be grateful for. And if they can, it's usually negative. But we are grateful people. In the midst of it all, so many things to be grateful for. But sometimes being thankful requires us to wait. I've heard it said that God has three answers for prayer. Yes, no, and wait. I feel like right now, God is asking us to wait. And I don't know about you, but waiting is not my strength. It's characteristic in American Thanksgiving that we look back and we remember the pilgrims and God's providential care for them. However, there's irony in that this year. According to the Associated Press, this year, 2020, was supposed to be a big one for this celebration. Dozens of events were planned to mark the 400th anniversary of the religious separatists' arrival in what we now know as Plymouth, Massachusetts. But many of these activities had to be canceled or postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. There is deep irony in that. Historian Elizabeth Fenn writes about that irony when she says, novel infections did most of the dirty work of colonization. Disease introduced by traders and settlers, either by happenstance or intentional, played a significant role in the conquest of the native people. And that innocent fact, well known to the native's descendants, is contrary to the traditional narrative of the New World. Ironic that now in the midst of this global pandemic, lodged next to Advent, Thanksgiving is not only for remembering. Thanksgiving waits and it expects. Faithful gratitude believes that the God who has given us good gifts has many more gifts to give. And while God's gifts are welcome, they do in fact sometimes disrupt, don't they? Think with me, if you will, about some things that you are thankful for that certainly did not seem like a blessing at the time, but have since provided you with a different perspective, a new way of thinking. That's what Thanksgiving is about. Not running down a laundry list of things that you're thankful for, but thinking about the things that God has done in your life to change you, to make you appreciative of what God has done. This year, more than any other year, we are well aware of being thankful when things don't go our way. Right now, millions of people are realizing 
just how much we have taken for granted. Our health, our ability to travel, socialize, festivals and fairs, weddings, and even trips to the park. Ironically, it's when these are stripped away that we start to understand and appreciate the things that we have. Even the holidays look very different. Family gatherings are being postponed or canceled altogether. We don't have the option of hurried preparation for a massive meal for a massive amount of people. We don't have anything more to think about except our blessings in the midst of challenge. And yet in the middle of those challenges, we're learning about the often forgotten virtue of gratitude. If we didn't know it before, this year especially, we are forced to acknowledge that life is a gift. We are never self-starters. We are always dependent on God. Psalm 100 lays the groundwork for that gift of thanks. God is steadfast and faithful, utterly reliable. One of my favorite Thanksgiving stories comes from an elderly woman, now deceased, who shared her daily habit with me. Each morning as she took her walk, she gave thanks for the many blessings in her life. Though she walked slowly through her neighborhood, burdened by the aging process and the loneliness accompanying her years as a widow, her children now grown and gone, she confessed to me that she never has run out of things for which to be thankful. Her simple practice of thanksgiving shaped how she lived her life how she faced aging, and how she related to others. The bridge to heaven will be filled with people who didn't have one thing to be thankful for except the gift of God's grace and forgiveness in their lives. And may that be true for all of us. Amen. In our tradition, in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we share communion every time we gather together. And so you are invited today to share in this meal. Hopefully you have prepared the elements in front of you, some symbols of the bread and the wine, that you can remember this meal and share it as we all share it together. Come to the table, prepare yourselves to receive the gift of Jesus that God has given to you. We remember from scripture that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he gave thanks to God for it, he broke it. And he gave it to them and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this always and remember me. And when they had finished eating, he poured out a cup of wine. And he said, in this cup is the new covenant, the new promise that's in my blood. Every time you drink this, drink it and remember me. Let us pray. Gracious God, from wherever we are, we gather around this table. We share in the symbols of bread and wine, symbols of your body and blood broken and shed for us on the cross. We are so thankful that we have that gift of eternal life that comes to each one of us who believe. And so allow us to take that gift of forgiveness that you've given to us and share it in a world that desperately needs to know it. In your name we pray. Amen. The body and the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Let's share in this meal together.
As our time of worship concludes, our time of service begins. We return to our living and working amidst a world of need. As you go from this place, carry with you the knowledge that you are recipients of God's gifts. As we go, we vow to share those gifts with the world around us, and may God walk with you as you travel life's road. Amen.